Hello, Facebook land. Got to guess where I am today. I can't believe that we're allowed to be in here right now, Piz. All right. Oh my gosh. Those are actual astronauts about getting, getting ready, ready to get put into the neutral buoy buoyancy lab. Full size mock up of the International Space Station. And do we have the names of the astronauts that are in there right now? It was. So how long does this prep work take for them to, to the get? Prep work mm -hmm. takes about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, mm -hmm. depending on getting right. suited up. And how, about, how long does it take to scratch their nose? <laughs> they actually have, they have uh, a scratcher a in there. Valsalva right? device on the inside so they can plug their nose to pop their ears. Oh, no. They can oh. use that Valsalva device to scratch their nose. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. That's, that's sort of like I'd wake up... Uh, Worrying about that, really? <laughs> yeah. About how would I do that? Yeah. I've got a scr I've got a scr an itch on my, you know. The question uh, you should be asking is, how do they spend six hours in there without eating? <laughs> yeah. There you go. They're in there for six hours with nothing but thirty-two ounce drink bag. They get thirty-two ounces. You mean on a spacewalk or here? Both. For six oh, for Both. here it's sort of like they really and are. They're usually only mm. in the water for six hours here. Mm -hmm. On orbit, they can be uh, yeah. in the suit for up to eight hours. Yes. I've been following, you know, all of the most recent spacewalks. It's been a lot of them, yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So I do a lot of presentations in schools, and I always bring in, you know, when I show the neutral buoyancy lab, and uh, especially because we've had so many uh, spacewalks going on, um, you know, people are really, so I'm really trying to give them the view that it's not just that spacewalk. It's everything that's happened leading up to that point, which can only be done here. And in fact, yeah. each one mm. of the spacewalks, that crew member has uh, done that exact task in this pool mm -hmm. five times in order to qualify to do it on orbit. Oh, At wow. At least five times. So can you answer, so Christina Cook, if she's coming back on uh, Thursday, back right? No, so. I think she, she undocked this morning. Oh, was it this morning? Yeah. February, yeah. what date is it today? Four. Okay, all right, yes, sure. So she's coming back, <laughs> right, yeah. and so what is going on? Uh, so, but she she spent an extra three months uh, there in space, and she ended up doing some spacewalks in that extra three three months. But it, she was originally not scheduled to be up there for that extra three months, right? So, how so did that she, work? Uh, how did that work? Uh, the reason she ended up doing those spacewalks is because we we developed the procedures to fix the AMS, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, yes. here at the MBL, and the crew member that we were we were using. Uh, as our, our expert in the suit, it was Chris Cassidy. Yes. And Chris Cassidy got bumped from a Russian flight because the United Arab Emirates was paying to have one of their astronauts fly. That was what did it. Since he got bumped, okay. she was next in line to make those repairs. Okay, so she was like a backup. She was like a backup. So she'd already done some of the testing. In the See, yes. that's that's what I mean. That, that's was like sitting a... on console kind of feeding her the information yeah. that he learned. Got he, it. He wasn't happy about that, by the way. <laughs> no, <laughs> of course. Jerry Ross mm. is on our board. Doing good. Oh. Yeah, I hope I got fascinating, that right. Fascinating mm. stories. Oh, I hope I got that right. Live streaming. Oh, <laughs> yes. Sorry. There you go. Hey, yes. Everything here is just a, a best, uh, you know, we're, really what this is about is is just getting present to the amazing work of preparation, that's I think, because that lot. often goes unmissed. And because uh, mostly it's sort of like concentrating on the on orbit operations, but without without this, that would never have happened. So I, I'm really 
inspired by all of that. We train here about three to four times a week. Not necessarily the same crew, but we have crew mm -hmm. in here in the water three to four times a week. Right. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Sure. Anyway, this is just going out to my, you know, small little Facebook community. Gotcha. But they're they're all into space, so it's sort of really good. So anyway, thank you so much. You're and You're so this is. You don't know. I'm not. I'm not. No badges being okay. shown here. Anyway, I was just trying to get uh, my name your first. Is James, Shaw. James. There you go. Thank you so much. And what do you do? All right. I am one of the co-op interns here okay. at the NBL. What's your expertise? Mm -hmm. Biomedical engineer. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm working on uh, getting a heart rate monitor inside those white suits so that we can monitor our astronauts' health. Of How do you do that? I'll let you know in May. <laughs> <laughs>
looks like what what's going on there is so part of the the training obviously for an astronaut in the work and then they have these other divers who are there both for safety and for support and i think they're they're going through a little impromptu debrief of what was going on during their wet spacewalk colleague maybe he's just got tired or something okay to shake hands with Ashley. oh yes there you go we had a little bit of calm issues at the beginning so that slowed down a little bit but but after that no it went went pretty smooth yeah uh this this is one of those runs so we have a a a nine run training flow that you go through and now we're past that now you get opportunities just to see some potential spacewalks that you might do while you're on orbit yeah and so that's what uh, are you signing your next flight yet i am yeah so Peter and i are, are assigned to go up on the crew dragon so the spacex oh, that's vehicle. right I can see. Yeah. So do you have a scheduled EVA or, or just we, preparing for any We do not. You know, the, the hard part for us is uh, we aren't sure when we're actually going to launch. Right. And, you know, so mm -hmm. there's, it, it's kind of amazing how you've got all these different supply vehicles that are coming up. And like the one we did today is dependent on the Japanese um, mm -hmm. HDV coming mm -hmm. up because it's bringing the batteries and all right. of that. So, right. you know, if it launches on time and mm -hmm. it's sitting there, then, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, then, then we could potentially have some. Yeah. Uh, but you never know, right? When I went up the first time, didn't have any schedule. An EVA with students, and I took oh. the, the battery swap. So they're, yeah. they're they've got to translate and yeah. disconnect to reconnect. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a whole mission control setup. Oh, nice. The work, yeah, work very nice. I wish I had more time yeah. to talk to you about that. Yeah, Could I get some just quickly yeah. bring something in. I'm yeah. present to the fact so uh, is involved with organizations that experiments to the space station, uh -huh. and yeah. there's probably a very high likelihood.
Good. Time research. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, God bless you. What's what uh, type of research is it? What are they working well, right on? now? We're it's uh, biofilm. Okay, it's on station now. It's uh -huh. a film in your mouth. It's clogging up the filters up there. And, uh, <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Huh. It's, and it's getting into electronics, so they want to do a study. Yeah, you know, it's funny because all of, you don't think about it down here on Earth, but all of the uh, deodorants, yep. the lotions, all of that kind of.